organizing. But I said, what are you guys doing? And they said, no, mom, you can't know. You know, one of those days, good secrets. And uh, it's an exciting day. I got texts this morning, I'm a happy Mother's Day mom, all of that. Texted my mom, texted Leon's mom. But I also am aware that Mother's Day can sometimes be a difficult day. Not for everyone is Mother's Day a good day. For some of us, we realize that we don't have children or we don't have a good relationship with our own mom. Sometimes relationships can be complicated. Maybe it brings up sadness, but whatever today brings, either it is a joyful day, you're excited about today, you're gonna do fun things, maybe a nice lunch with your family celebrating Mother's Day, or today is a hard day. I honestly hope and pray that today will be a blessing for you, that you're gonna leave today feeling blessed, right? Last year in August, Leon and I, we, um, we went to the Netherlands to visit our parents and family, and uh, I had the privilege to visit the house, the family home of Corrie ten Boom. I don't know if you know her, but she's a very famous woman for her faith and perseverance, and um, Corrie ten Boom was born in 1892. She lived in the Netherlands, and um, she passed away actually in 1983. So I was still a little girl when she passed away, but still, she is one of my heroes in the faith. Yes, she was Dutch, so I can relate to that, but she lived in uh, Haarlem, one of the cities in Amsterdam, well known for their resistance work during the Second World War. And her family, her, her sister, her father, they lived together in a house. And they hid over 800 Jews during the Second World War. Some for just a couple of days, some for months. But they did great work. And at the end of the war, they were betrayed and they were put into prison. And I was actually thinking about that when I was preparing for this ser uh, sermon. And I was thinking, man, she was even older than I am today. And she went into prison and a couple of weeks later, her father died in prison and Corey and her sister Betsy were taken to one of the concentration camps in Germany, in Ravensbrück. And she suffered immensely there. If you read her book, if you read her biography, Corrie ten Boom must have suffered so much. Like if you just read the stories of what happened, they're standing in the cold in the morning for hours, winter time, hardly any clothes on, and she was not young anymore. The circumstances were horrific, but she kept her faith. She stayed so close to Jesus. And in December of 1944, actually her sister passed away and she was there all by herself. And then it was a miracle actually, but she got released. And she went back to the Netherlands. And after that, uh, she received from the Lord a ministry. She was a great evangelist and she traveled the entire world, but especially North America. And so she also passed away in California in 1983. But I often go back to her books. I often, even if it's just reading a little bit of, of what she wrote, she's known for a lot of quotes that she did just to encourage people to have faith. And last August, after we had done this whole tour in her house, I actually was there with my brother and my sister and we were back and uh, driving home and we were in the car and we were talking together. How just walking around in that house and just reading and hearing again about her life, how encouraging it was. And I was thinking about that. What is it about her life that is so encouraging for me? What makes her a hero for me? And actually, for me, it is that someone who went through such chaos, through such suffering, was still able to keep her faith real, 
And you know what? Her faith was so simple. Just trust in Jesus. Can't be more simple than that, but it was so deep. Her simple, uncomplicated faith to me had so many deep roots. And for me as an individual, I look up to that. And to me, that is an inspiration to go back to every time there is chaos in my life. Every time I go through a day or maybe a season where I experience chaos and things don't go the way I want them to go and I struggle, I can go back and I want to hold on to that same faith as Corey ten Boom had. Just simple, trusting in Jesus, that he is with me in the chaos and in the storm. And today is Mother's Day, and I think if there's anyone here who understands chaos, it is a mom, right? Is there any mom here who doesn't understand chaos? What chaos looks like? This is my little living room today. And I don't know about you, but as a mom, I know how I can clean up my house, and it's neat and tidy and clean, and then my kids come home. Do you know that? Within minutes, they, can get, they make chaos again. And I'm always surprised. Shoes here, a backpack there. You know, my countertop is all clean and neat and tidy. And then, what happened? As if a bomb exploded. And I think, if not every mom, and Amy knows what that is, so she's creating here chaos. Just simple, the chaos that we as mom really know about. <laughs> Good job, Amy. You know. Chaos. Chaos is actually disorder. Chaos means confusion. Chaos means unpredictability, a lack of organization, a lack of order, as you can see. And chaos actually comes and goes in different forms. Sometimes chaos is short, just maybe a couple of hours. But sometimes chaos can last for days, months sometimes. And we know all kinds of different forms of chaos. Uh, just Sleepless nights, do you know them? Oh my goodness, just sleepless nights. They can just create chaos in your head, right? You just feel so overwhelmed. And just even though a chaos like this is maybe what takes 10, 15 minutes to clean up again, but if you have had no sleep, you just don't have the energy to get up and get it all organized again. Who knows that here? Yeah, okay. But motherhood is more than just this kind of chaos, right? It's the concerns, the worries that we can have. What friends do my kids hang out with? What are their academic achievements, their, their, what are their interests, what are their choices? And as a mom or a parent, you can be concerned about that. And even that can create chaos in your head, and maybe in the middle of the night you're awake and you're thinking about all those things. Maybe as a parent, what can create chaos is the doubts. I don't know about you, but I've had, and still sometimes do, have moments where I feel like I'm just winging parenthood. I don't know how to do that. I don't know what to do or to say or to react in a, in a certain circumstance. And you're just doing what, what you think in the moment is best to do. And then at night you're pondering and you're thinking, was this actually the best thing to do or not? And all those things can make and feel like motherhood can be sometimes just so chaotic. And maybe 
When you're here or listening to me, chaos is not just this. Maybe you have a child that is sick. Maybe you have a child that made decisions that you don't agree with. Maybe you see your own child suffering. Maybe from wrong decisions. Maybe you lost a child. Maybe you have a child that doesn't follow the Lord anymore. And that's what keeps you awake in the middle of the night. And all those situations can feel like chaos, as if there's no order in your life, racing thoughts. And maybe you're sitting here and you're not even a mom at all. But still, I believe everyone here understands and has experience with chaos in your life. Maybe it's at work. Maybe chaos in your career. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's just relationships. Maybe there's chaos right now in your marriage. Maybe there's chaos in your family. And those relationships bring chaos in your life doesn't really matter this morning if it is the typical mom chaos or if it is any other type of chaos. We all know and have experienced chaos in our life. We've all been familiar with it. And you know what? Nobody, I think, welcomes chaos, right? Nobody is like, yeah, a little bit more chaos in my life. I kind of enjoy that. Nobody. We all want to have a life that feels we have things in order. We know what is coming. We know what tomorrow brings, right? We don't want to feel overwhelmed by anything. But do you know what? Actually, chaos, whatever chaos it is, chaos is needed for you to grow. Without chaos, in whatever form of chaos that might be, without chaos, it's impossible to grow, to grow, to mature, to build up resiliency. We need chaos. Not that the chaos itself is always what we need, but it is through chaos that we can grow and that we can learn new skills, that we can be challenged. Oftentimes, I when people come to me and they struggle, for example, with anxiety, I have to normalize chaos for them and say, that's normal. Those situations in life happen. And so it, the challenge is not to get rid of the situations, but the challenge is how do we deal with the situations when they come? And there's an amazing story in the Bible that I want to read with you because to me, it's a beautiful short story in the Bible, the New Testament, Jesus and his disciples, and there is tremendous chaos. And Jesus just speaks a couple of words that I want to read today, and I really hope that that is encouraging to you. We're going to read Matthew 8, 23 to 27. It's about Jesus and his disciples who are in a boat. Then Jesus got into the boat and started across the lake with his disciples. Suddenly, a fierce storm stuck, struck the lake with waves breaking into the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him up, shouting, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. Jesus responded, why are you afraid? You have so little faith. And then he got up and rebuked the wind and waves, and suddenly there was a great calm. The disciples were amazed. Who is this man? They asked. Even the winds and waves obey him. And I don't know about you, but when I learned this story uh, in Sunday school when I was young, it kind of felt like Jesus woke up very grumpy. You know, he was asleep, you know, nice sleep, and then the disciples wake him up, and he's like, ah, oh, what? And then he responds, why are you so afraid? Why do you have so little faith? And 
I don't know, but as a child, it always made me even feel a little bit scared of Jesus. Like, you wake him up because you need him, and then he responds with, why have you so little faith? Why are you afraid? But actually, what I think what happened here is this. We're reading this story from the book of Matthew, and what Matthew was trying to do was to convince his readers that Jesus was not just a rabbi, that Jesus was not just a rabbi who also could do some miracles because that had happened before, that there were rabbis who could do miracles. But what Matthew is trying to convince his readers of is, people, please, this is not just a rabbi. This is the Messiah, the Son of God that we've been waiting for for so long. And what I see Matthew do here is very shortly describe this story and basically showing, I think Jesus said more to his disciples than just that sentence. And just the sentence, why are you afraid you have so little faith? But it was for Matthew that exact sentence that revealed that Jesus was the Messiah. That Jesus himself knew that he was the Son of God. And if he did not choose for the, in that moment that the disciples and himself would die, it would just not happen. Because he was the son of God. And Matthew was so impressed and he was so aware when he was writing this that Jesus was the son of God, the Messiah, that he wrote this down just to show his readers Jesus, when he is in the boat with you, he's not just somebody who can do a miracle, but you can feel safe, you can feel reassured. That he is in control. And you know what? That storm, a couple of the disciples were skilled fishermen. They had had um, storms before. This was not just nobody knowing what they were doing. And I love when we read that scripture that the disciples just honestly woke Jesus up and said, Jesus, we are afraid we're going to drown. And to me, that is such an encouragement that you and I too, we can wake Jesus up and just say, Jesus, I am afraid. And tell him what you're afraid of. These disciples that were afraid were going to drown, but maybe you are afraid of something totally different. Maybe you're afraid your child will not serve the Lord. Maybe you're afraid because your child is struggling. Maybe you're afraid you're not doing a good job as a parent of whatever the chaos is that in that moment you are experiencing. What I so love about this is that the disciples knew who to go to, Jesus. And Jesus was not just somebody. He was the son of God and he was in the middle of there. And Jesus is in whatever storm, whatever chaos, he is peace. I want to read that with you in Isaiah, Isaiah 9, verse 6. This is one of the prophecies about the Messiah that was coming. And this is what is Isaiah prophesies. For a child is born to us. We know this very well from Christmas. But for a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. That was the identity of the Messiah. And the Messiah was with the disciples in the storm. And that's what Matthew is trying to convince us, the readers of. This is just not somebody in the boat in the middle of the chaos. This was the Messiah who is the Prince of Peace. Not just somebody who can bring peace, but who is peace. I like how Jesus himself during his ministry on earth, identifies as peace. Let read, let's read that together as well. John 14, verse 27. I am leaving you with a gift. This is what Jesus himself is saying. I am leaving you with a gift. 
peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Jesus is the peace. And in whatever chaos you and I find ourselves, we can be reassured that in the middle of it, not just a miracle worker, not just a wise man, not just somebody who is kind and helpful, but the Son of God is in the midst of it. And you know what? Often in the midst of chaos, what happens is that our eyes are drawn to the chaos. And we see the chaos. We see everything around us. And in a way, it distracts us from being able to see who is with us in the middle of the chaos. It's often not, where is Jesus? But I just can't see him because I'm distracted. He is there. That's his promise that he will be there. And I want to give you a couple of points today that you can take home with you on this Mother's Day. And I want to really encourage every person here, but especially every mom. I'm a mom myself. Chaos is part of life. I don't know if that encourages you, but you know what? Sometimes we fight the wrong fight. We fight against chaos. We don't want chaos. But if we can accept together that chaos is part of life, we don't have to fight that fight. Chaos is simply part of life. And the second point is this. Embrace any chaos that comes your way, that you encounter, as an opportunity for growth. Every chaos, no matter what, is an opportunity to get out of your comfort zone, to be challenged, to build resiliency, to get your roots deeper into your faith, trusting Jesus. That's why when I am challenged and when sometimes I feel um, the chaos raging around me, I sometimes just think of Corey Ten Boom, what she went through. And I just sometimes just read the encouraging statements that she makes. One of them, and I love that quote, is this. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. That's one of the things that she's very known for. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. And in the chaos where oftentimes the future is unknown, I know that I have a God that I can trust. And I want to encourage you with that as well. You have a God who is in the storm with you. And the challenge is not to get the storm away, but where do you fix and fo focus your eyes on? Do you fix and focus your eyes on the chaos? Or can you let go of it and focus on Jesus? And what does he say? Jesus never takes away our responsibility. He doesn't. Because he knows that when we take our responsibility, that is what will help us grow and learn. But he will come into your storm and he can calm and will calm the wind and the waves and bring peace in the midst of it. I am looking for my card, and it's so chaotic here that I don't even know where my card is. Oh, here it is, under the pizza box. The last point is this, Jesus is with you in the chaos. Jesus is with you in the chaos, no matter what chaos it is. And my desire for this morning is that when you go home, as a mom, to so the daily chaos, dirty fingers, 
the concerns, the worries, the doubts, all that is part of motherhood, or whatever your, your chaos looks like, that this morning you will search for Jesus, to fix your eyes on him, and to see Jesus in it all, and so that he can speak peace over your chaos. And that you can find the strength and the hope in that to continue and to not give up. To keep going. So that next year you can look back and you can say, yes, exactly what Rebecca said during the worship. I would not be here without him. He helped me to get through it. And because of him, I learned and I grew. Because that is what Jesus wants to do. This morning, all the moms will receive an encouragement card. And just either put it in your Bible or in a book or maybe on the fridge or put it next to your bed or wherever is a good place for you. But we want to give you this little card as an encouragement. And I'll read what it says. A real mom, emotional, yet the rock, tired but she keeps going. Worried, but full of hope. Impatient, yet patient. Overwhelmed, but she never quits. Amazing, even though doubted. Wonderful, even in the chaos. A life changer every single day. And in Proverbs, the very last verse, it says this, give her credit for all she has done. She deserves the respect of everyone. And I'm a mom myself, and I want to encourage you. You're doing the, the most important job out there. You are raising children. And if you're here and you're a grandmother, or you're not a natural mother, but you're encouraging others, helping others, using your mom gifts it's the most important thing i believe out there and i just want to encourage you with that you're not alone you're not alone in the storm and in the chaos he is with you